Looking for a Phoenix area hike that has views, water, and a moderate amount of challenge? Look no further than the majestic Butcher Jones Trail in the Tonto National Forest. This one's sure to become a favorite. First, let's get some facts out of the way. The Butcher Jones Trailhead is located east of Phoenix within the Tonto National Forest. An important note is that this is a fee area and you'll either need a Tonto National Forest Day Pass or an annual pass like we have. Don't worry if you forget to buy one, they do have machines on the premises, but here's a money saving tip. They sell passes at many Phoenix Valley businesses like Circle K and Safeway or at ranger stations and you won't be hit with the extra fee you'll get charged at the machines, which is several dollars. Once you park and display your permit, it's time to hit the trail. All right, let's enter the Butcher Jones Trail and walk along Saguaro Lake. The Butcher Jones Trail is an out and back style trail, just shy of six miles in length with 636 feet of overall elevation gain. All trails classify as the route as moderately challenging. The first half of the trail primarily straddles a hillside facing Saguaro Lake. The views from this side are beyond amazing. The second half of the trail cuts across a strip of land and comes out on the Salt River upstream of Saguaro Lake. The views here were among my favorite of the day. The only real hazards I encountered that day were the rocky terrain, which is easy to roll an ankle on, as well as lack of shade, which could be a problem on a hot summer day. On this day though, we started early and it was cool sailing. And now for the best part. For those unable to witness the beauty of the Sonoran Desert firsthand, we bring to you a virtual hike. The start of the hike is near a lot of reeds and habitat that various waterfowl seem to enjoy. I immediately loved watching the birds here and taking in our first views of Saguaro Lake. Little did I know at the time that this part is just the appetizer. The first interesting feature of the trail is a hike around a little cove. I'd like to call out the view you can get of the four peaks in the background looking downwards towards the cove, especially from the air. Great photo op if you can get it. The trail stays at lake level early on, hugging the shoreline until you come upon an area dense with trees and lots of shade. You'll forget you're in Arizona for a hot minute in there. Would be welcome on a hot day. But as you come out to the other side, that's about all the shade you're going to get. We are now going to ascend up the hill where we'll get some better views of the lake. At the point you'll start to turn south on the trail, you'll get your best views of Saguaro Lake yet. There's an even better spot to come, but this whole section might be our second favorite of the hike. Being higher than a lake gives you many photo opportunities. At this point, I've still not broken a sweat, and time passes by quickly when you are mesmerized by the Arizona landscape. There comes a point where the trail turns east towards Four Peaks. There are amazing vantage points that give you the best views yet. There's tons of little points that just serve as beautiful photo opportunities out here. If you like landscape, photography, these cliffs, the saguaro, the rolling foothills and the mountains. Perfect combos. Once you start making your way east on the trail, around the point where the Salt River turns into Saguaro Lake, these were some of the best shots of the day.
Seeing the boats cruising out in the sun was like something out of a movie. As the trail heads east, you'll start your way up high and make your way down near to lake level again. You'll have lake views for a little while on this part, but for the time being, they'll become less frequent. On all trails, you can see several short spurs that go to the lake shore, but in retrospect, I'd say they're not worth the pricker or two you'll likely take along the way. Uh, I'd give you a 50-50 chance. And after you've gotten your trail spurs worth, time for the Great Desert Crossing. The Great Desert Crossing, huh? Okay, it's not as exciting as it sounds. This is the part where we have to cross a small peninsula to come upon the Salt River again, and the grand finale. So let's not linger and I'll summarize it quickly. This is the most exposed section and it's relatively flat. The main excitement is a steep wash you have to descend. It's brief and the most challenging spot on the trail, although it wasn't that bad. If I had to pick my least favorite part, it would be this section, although there are some things to be enjoyed here. You see a lot of cool cacti on this part. All in all though, I think you get the idea, and I'm itching to take us to the best part next. After crossing the stretch of desert, we come to a fork in the road. The finale begins with a choice. My interpretation is that the Butcher Jones trail goes left, and the trail to the right is another spur. So I decided to go right first and take the last spur, the completionist thing. Since I already opened my mouth and said I'm being a completionist today, I guess I forced the issue with the spur, huh? Unlike the advice I gave about the first couple spurs, this one is definitely worth it. You'll soon start to get views of the Salt River once more, and four peaks can be seen on the horizon. The walk back here gets beautiful again. Okay, and now for my absolute favorite part. As I surveyed the shoreline for the first time, I started to think this would make a cool location for a pirate movie. Do any of you see it? It's very rocky and ship rock adds a lot of interest to the shots. All that's left to do is head back up the spur to the end of the trail. All right, we're back on the Butcher Jones proper. Should be our last quarter of a mile. For me, it was hard to determine exactly where the trail ended, but close enough. The final highlight of this endpoint is the view of the four peaks behind the Salt River. It's a scene you can gaze on for long periods of time. A worthy scene to end a hike on, don't you think? And technically, we're not complete yet because I gotta go all the way back now, another couple miles back to the parking lot. Lucky for you, you've already seen it all, so I'll just catch up back with you when we get over on the other side. Another virtual hike added to the Cactus Atlas. That was definitely enjoyable. And if this video inspires you to hike the Butcher Jones Trail, we'd love to hear about it. Comment down below and let us know. All right, I completed the Butcher Jones Trail. I would say for me personally, I'd give that one an easy. Um, and on all trails, I rated it a four out of five. You can find the Cactus Atlas on all trails, see my stats, and don't give me a hard time. It took me four hours because I filmed, flew my drone, and took a lot of pictures. 